It doesn't matter how much they sound like your lost loved ones. Anyone from around here will tell you that. You especially do not follow them into the dense growth of pines. If you do, it's all over. Or so they say. Layla really should have known better. She too grew up here in the shadow of that forest. Perhaps after so many years away, she'd forgotten. I hadn't realized she'd been walking to the boundary each night, speaking to them in hushed tones until two nights before we were supposed to leave, when she left while I was still awake. I, I had to follow her. It's mom. She turned to look at me, such pain in her eyes, but her voice was calm. She's been calling for me since we got here. If it weren't for the funeral, we would have never come back to our hometown. We had no fond memories, only a handful remaining of both our families, too stubborn or ensnared in its grasp to leave. So there we were, Layla's in her PJs, foot hovering near the deep black soil where the woods began. I couldn't lie to her by saying it wasn't Nazarene she heard. Layla's eyes were glassy when she turned to face me. I reached out for her hand, but it slipped through my fingers as she stepped onto the other side. I wasn't sure what I expected. Her to disappear into mist, be snatched away, but she just wove through the pines frantically. I didn't even stop to think. There was nothing to think about. I ran in after her. She was standing still by the time I caught up, focused on something in the distance that I knew better than to look at. I scooped her up. She put up no resistance. Neither of us fell back asleep, felt at ease only when the next day passed uneventfully. We lay in bed quietly that final night. The rental car packed up and ready for our mid-morning flight, listening to the storm. I wondered if she heard it too. The sounds of steps along the steep eaves above our head, timed so that they nearly blended in with the patter of the rain. She clutched at my hand in the darkness, confirming that indeed she had. We were only in town for a few days. We'd escaped this place. We weren't like so many others that remained, spent their entire lives here, perhaps beyond that too. A window squeaked open in protest. We had a life together across the country, in a tiny apartment where each night was not filled with distant cries of pain, misery, invitation. It was a pity that we'd die here after all. The smell of rain filled the tiny cabin. I heard it falling on the linoleum in the kitchen. We'd been so close to leaving this place. Instead, we, like so many before us, would become just two more voices crying out from the woods. <laughs>